thousands of gold and silver pieces. Let your kindness comfort me according to your promise to your servant. Let your compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. For I love your command more than gold, however fine. For in all your precepts I go forward, every false way I hate. Wonderful are your decrees, therefore I observe them. The revelation of your words sheds light, giving understanding to the simple. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand these things? They answered, Yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. probably all familiar with uh, those uh, television stories or movies where you have the X marks the spot treasure map. And of course, if you find this uh, treasure, you will be rich beyond your wildest imaginings. And oftentimes, people will go out on great quests searching them out. And in some of the uh, fables, the one who recklessly sells things in order to find something he has not yet found is truly in trouble. But uh, our parable tonight is not like those stories where X marks the spot. Rather, the parable tonight is about somebody who has already found that which is most important. Now, you'd think that Solomon, the great wise king, 
that we heard about in our first reading truly found the pearl of great price uh, when he asked for wisdom, an understanding heart to be able to discern what was right from what was wrong. And it would be perhaps a good uh, notion to think that yes, he did find that hidden treasure, that pearl of great price. And yet I would posit to you that there was something even Solomon missed in what he was seeking. For it's one thing to know and understand what is right and wrong. And it is another thing to do what is right, to do what is good. You see, at the end of his life, Solomon, for all of his wisdom, which led to the great increase of the boundaries of the people of Israel to their greatest extent, um, and all of his great wealth, Solomon's story ends in a kind of sadness and sorrow. We're told that in his old age, he had given himself over um, to the pleasures of this world. And he had become overly concerned about pleasing his many wives, even building shrines and temples, not to Yahweh, the God of Israel, but rather uh, to the various gods and goddesses of his various wives and concubines. So with all of that wisdom, all that understanding, knowing what is right from what is wrong, why did he not live, even to the end, what was right? Which gets me to what I think the true treasure hidden and the true pearl of great price is. The true pearl of great price is the, the revelation, the realization of the love of God. Such, in such a fashion to truly know and experience the love of God that it completely and utterly transforms your life so that you want to love God in return. The story of the Pearl of Great Price or the treasure that has been found is really about conversion, the conversion of life. And if we want to find stories which really represent the parables, we need to look to the great conversion stories throughout the centuries. What was it about those conversion stories? They experienced God, His love, it utterly transformed them and called them to love God in return. And that, my friends, is what we should ask for. Not necessarily wisdom, but rather the ability to truly love God. For when we love God, then it will be easy to do what we know to be right and to avoid what we know to be wrong. It is the love of God and having that love fully in our hearts, which is the true pearl of great price. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we now make our prayer for our community and for the world, let us all pray to Christ the Lord, not only for ourselves and our own needs, but for the entire people. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations afflicted by poverty, famine, and injustice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those working for a fair distribution of the food and resources of the earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all essential workers, that God will protect their health as they continually put themselves at risk in service to others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we encounter the risen Christ through our synod process, may, we may, like St. Mary Magdalene, lead lives of greater sanctity and joyfully proclaim him to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, especially Brady Swenson, Bunny Jarvis, Nick Trefeer, Teresa Tater, Andrea Diotis, Mary Jo Fosgen, Mark Rosniak, Steve Marshart, Tom Ambrose, Madar Kaisershot, Cody Binshot. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Carolyn McFarland. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Laverne Kolofsky, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask the Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call on you, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are your Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gift, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Bernard our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, stand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communing with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things you may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as one who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father, in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, to mend that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, 
God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and never forget all his benefits. Let us pray. We have consumed, O oh Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Christ our Lord. We congratulate uh, Patrick Bertolendi and Bunny Powell, who were married here this afternoon. We announced the band of marriage for the second time for Ryan Sandgren and Andrea Ruddy. Perhaps you've heard about uh, Sacred Heart Catholic School and its Summer Challenge matching grant that the Schultz Family Foundation uh, has offered uh, the school. Uh, if we raise $15,000 by August the 15th, the Schultz Family Foundation will match another $15,000 for a total of $30,000, which we'll use to help uh, prepare for the school year when we are planning to have school in session on campus, uh, but there are also certain contingencies that we must follow, as well as stricter sanitary and uh, disinfecting policies. Uh, and so these funds will help us uh, to manage that, as well as to offer scholarships uh, for students who might not be able to attend due to the general economic circumstances that they find themselves in. So if you can help, we'd be grateful. Already we have raised over uh, $10,000, so we're well on our way to meeting the match. Uh, if you were able to help us to fulfill that first 15 grand, that would be wonderful.
Parish bulletins are available um, at the front desk during the week and also um, can be picked up as you leave the church today. Just a reminder, there are the four baskets, two in the front and two at the cross aisle and the side aisles uh, for you to deposit your offertory envelopes or anything for the loose plate collection. We are very grateful for your ongoing support and we encourage you also to make use of the Sacred Heart Chapel during the week during office hours for personal prayer. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Good. 